Welcome to another Tackle Obesity Show, featuring Coach Richard Walker, our host, members of the NFL alumni, lifestyle weight loss experts, and key social media influencers that are making a difference. Now, Coach Richard Walker. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Tackle Obesity. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It is the final Final, final Tackle Obesity episode of the month of March, a.k.a. Tackle Obesity Month. Uh, once again, we want to give a very, very warm, sincere thank you to the, the wonderful city of New York and its leadership team. Uh, they, For those of you that, that are not aware, we received a proclamation from the mayor of New York and the city of New York for the Tackle Obesity Movement. Uh, the, all this information is on our website. There's the proclamation right there. Uh, we are so excited that the leadership of the biggest city in the United States stepped up first. They stepped up first and said, we want in on Tackle Obesity. We're your teammates. We're there with you. Uh, so, And actually, I just left New York. I literally just landed about 45 minutes ago uh, from New York. So I, I just want to thank you guys so much again. Uh, my question to all of those who are watching, who's next? What city's next? Um, Houston, Phoenix, uh, Los, Los Angeles. What's up? Out Atlanta. I'll, I'll start calling you guys out. Who's next? Who's next? New York made the first move. So who's next? And speaking of making moves, um, we are at a statistical checkpoint. And it's not a, it's an unfortunate one because uh, one of the things that I've harped on since the beginning of the year is the difference between a New Year's resolution and a revolution. And when I say New Year's revolution, I meant that you change your entire ecosystem. You change the way you think, the way you operate on a permanent basis. A resolution is just you resolve to do something different, but you have to change the mannerisms in which you do it in order for it to be sustainable. And when I say that we're at a statistical checkpoint, today being the last day of the first quarter of 2024, statistically speaking, 85% of people who made a New Year's resolution to lose weight will quit by today or sooner. So ironically speaking, as a, as a basketball fan, and, and my heart's still broken because my team lost last night, uh, as I witnessed the Sweet 16, we're down to the Sweet 15. So 15% 15 of people who made a New Year's resolution to lose weight are currently on track. By the time we reach the end of the year, that number is going to dwindle down to nine, statistically speaking. So 9% of you will complete your New Year's resolution. So my thought for today is, what is it that you're going to do differently? What are you going to do when things don't go your way? I had a very rough morning <laughs> this this morning, y'all. Uh, it started with uh, I had a car service scheduled to pick me up for the airport. Person doesn't show up. Canceled. Didn't tell me. I rush to the airport. I get to the airport. Flight's delayed. I get off the airport. Uh, have more issues getting off the plane. I get off the plane. I rush to my hotel so I could be ready for you guys. I get to the air of uh, the hotel. No AC at the hotel, so I have to make another reservation run over to another hotel, make another reservation, and I literally got squared away minutes before coming to talk to you this morning. That being said, these kind of things happen. And how do, how do you adjust? How do you adjust where you have a plan, you have a goal and say, okay, I'm going to change my, my, my wellness. I'm going to change my, 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 my lifestyle. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to exercise more. What happens if you get laid off? What happens if your hours are cut? What happens if you have relationship problems, health problems, whatever. How are you going to adapt to that? So these are things that you need to make as a part of your game plan if you want to sustain success. You have to think about what is going to happen when things don't go your way. And this is how we're going to get the number from a sweet 15 to a sweet 30, 35, 40, 40, 50. Hopefully, we could attack a larger chunk of that 80. So... That's what we're looking at, guys, is how can we adapt to when things don't go your way? So I am so, so, so excited to introduce our newest teammate because we don't use the guest word around here. 
guests are people who visit your your home or your business for one time and they never come back. We have teammates around here. So my our newest teammate is got so much information that he's going to share with you. He is also has a podcast that you need to subscribe to and you need to follow on all podcast platforms. He's also on YouTube. It's called the Success Fitness Podcast. And uh, his name is Christian Evans, and I'm going to bring him in now. Mr. Christian, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. It is so great to have you. We are so happy to have you on the Tackle Obesity team. I appreciate it. I appreciate the reach out. Okay, so tell all of our followers about you and, and your background. Like, what what got you ignited and, and interested in, in getting into the to wellness game? Well, in... 2013, I began, I would say, kind of loosely researching different diet plans, different ways to improve my health. I've always worked out, but I just never had my diet together. I would, you mm -hmm. know, lose 20 pounds, put 22 back on in the next couple of weeks. You know, the yo-yo thing, right? Mm -hmm. And one day I just sat down, was watching just various TV shows, and something finally made sense. It clicked. And I said, you know what, let me go ahead and, and try this. And, you know, I tried it. Um, Ten months later, I ended up losing 187 pounds. Wow. And from there, I began sharing my story of, you know, how I did it, why I did it, uh, where, you know, who, what, when, where, how, why, you know. And uh, I started a blog. Uh, website or blog website. Uh, even to this day, I still don't necessarily know how to identify it. So I just call it a blog site where I would document the who, what, when, where, how, and why, because I would get questions, you know, similar mm -hmm. to this one that I'm answering. And I would write it out, you know, or I would record videos. So video tutorials about, you know, um, how I did it and, um, you know, what I did as far as, you know, workouts and diets and, um, you know, food, meal prep tutorials, you know, just the whole gambit, you know, whatever my life was at that time, I put a camera to my face <laughs> and uh, whatever I was doing and then posted it, you know, and went far as from there. Eventually I ended up starting a, um, a podcast because writing and on the blog site took a little bit too much time for me. So it was better off for me to just talk, you know, to talk in a microphone. Um, I was doing that. Uh, end up, becoming a certified personal trainer kind of by mm -hmm. accident. And uh, just with all that, just being said, uh, you know, here I am pretty much right now. So super, you know, fast forward. So this has been going on for, let's say, let's say 10 years, you know, since 2014. Wow. So from 2013, 10 months later in May, um, I hit my goal weight. And then from there, you know, began, you know, my, uh, my hey. blog, as uh, far as from there, similar to what happened with you, I was legit maybe like two months out from um, um, making my blog go live or whatever. And my first, my my car went out. <laughs> my engine my engine blew out <laughs> on the expressway, man. It was December, uh, maybe like a week or so before my birthday. And I was like maybe a mile out from the exit to go to my house and my engine just went out. So that was one. So I'm like, okay, at least I got my blog to kind of work on to get my mind off of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Within maybe that same week, my computer, my laptop finally went out. And oh. I had to put like everything on hold, everything on hold uh, for an entire year, for an entire year. So I wanted to release it in like 2015. Mm -hmm. my blog but i end up having to like take a year off and you know that gave me time to rethink how i wanted to approach it and um you know revamp some things you know um and so from there uh that's you know my blog was released and uh you know went public and you know that was fun and then it ended up evolving into the podcast and at first it was called the christian's weight success but uh yeah the christian's weight success podcast but uh, again, things change. We all evolve. And I began noticing that it was too personal. It was too mm -hmm. personal far as for, for me, um, because that was what my uh, blog site was called, uh, Christians Weight Success in .net. And I wanted to be more communal, more, more, more community. So I ended up changing it maybe about 
almost going on about two years to the success fitness podcast. So, um, I still record workout tutorials, meal prep tutorials. I'm still a personal trainer and, um, you know, I'm all just, I'm trying to have more fun. So more fun with, with all of this. And now you're a coach on the tackle obesity team. How about that? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate so, it. so, uh, question for you, coach, cause, and you, you, you kind of touched on this, um, uh, with, with your own journey. Uh, there are so many different things out there, coach. Like there's, yeah. you name it. There's the, the fly a kite diet. Uh, there's the turn your key counterclockwise diet. There's yeah. the drink water standing up diet. You name it. There are like a trillion different quote unquote diets out there. Right. Right. And unfortunately the, the fact of the matter is it's big business. It's money behind right. all of this. Right. And it's some of it, some of it's legit. Some of it's not a, a very, a very significant portion of it isn't. It's a fad. It's it's the fantasy. Uh, it's the the magic pill, the magic wand. Uh, you do this and you will lose sixty pounds in in thirty days. Right. So how are we as you know people that are in the journey in in, the, in this movement? How do we separate the facts from the fad? You know what? To answer the question, you know we living this information age. And to me, it seems like nobody wants to do the research or there is, or are those who do not want to do the research for themselves. And that's kind of scary. Um, being 42 and understanding how the world works right now and realizing how it's been working and you can kind of see the trajectory of where it can will or may go you have to do your own due diligence, right? Um, because there are a lot of sensationalized things that are out there right now to get your eyes on it, to get your fingers to click on it, to get your ears to hear it. And you have to pray for discernment. You understand? Um, I made a tweet earlier today. It's like, you know, how do we get to a point to where adults, we're so comfortable letting everybody know we don't or can't read, you know, I'm um, seeing a lot of sensationalized, let's say headlines, which is the media's job to make the headlines look like that. And how is it that you can just run with that headline without clicking that little link right there, if it's provided. And if it's not, why won't you do your own research? So to answer the question is you have to do your own research. You have to do your own research and don't go with the first article that is on Google or DuckDuckGo, wherever you got. And we live in this information age and we all have these phones. We all, we all have, you know, the access to it. You understand what I'm saying? But it's really telling when we choose not to. So in the words of Kanye, slavery is a choice. You understand mm. what I'm saying? And mm. so, when you have the access to the information, you're choosing to not educate yourself to become free, to become uh, more liberated than what you are. Now, does it take time? It does. You know, will there be some confusion in there? Yes. But this is where you constantly research and you update. There has been a lot of things that I've read yesterday and it's changed today. And I'm okay with that because with time comes evolution and evolution of information. I think we want absolutes and that's fine too, but we have to realize what is an absolute, you know, when has anything ever been an absolute <laughs> other than taxes <laughs> and energy? That's bill an month. absolute. You <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and right. so, you know, with that being said, the overall history, when it comes to, let's say nutrition diets, workouts or whatever, they've always evolved and be okay with that, you know, be okay with that. So with that evolution, it says, okay, well, let me double check. Let me just, just check, you know, we can have skepticism or speculations on certain things, but not, you know, when it comes to the diet, you know, it's people pick and choose when they want to be selective or, um, you know, optimistic on certain things. But then when it comes to what you should as an individual, be responsible for for your own health and well-being we tend to stop and i don't have an answer for that it's just an observation that i've 
just recently mm-hmm. kind of learned to articulate because it's been, uh, you know, it's just, it's just been, you know, a funny, funny time. And I'm sitting back and I'm learning to try to not to respond to things immediately, initially without doing some form of due diligence, without right. some form of due diligence. Have I pulled the trigger and asked questions later? Yeah. Yeah, I have. But I also can admit that when I did that, I was wrong. You know what I mean? Or, hey, I stand corrected, you know, based on recent findings or based on updated information. Here is my new outlook on that and be OK with that. You know, yeah. um, there are those who just want to be right regardless. And that chase to do that is very scary. You know what I mean? Like nobody can tell you anything different. Nobody can offer you an additional point of view on how, you know, your view or your stance could either change or honestly just be more solid. But it's just that refusal to accept, to, you know, entertain an additional point of view other than yours. So with all, with all that being said, people have to do their own due diligence and research things themselves. You know, we're, we're too old to be solely dependent on somebody else. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It all has to mm-hmm. be a collective and don't be afraid to reach out for help too. That's the absolutely. Thing to where, That's critical. Know, just to reach out for help. Everybody needs help. Everybody should have a help, a mentor, a sage, a guide, or whatever. And I think once one can, let's say, accept that, then they can be successful as the other person who's had success at, let's say, um, within their fitness journey, right? And you will realize the people who've had success in their fitness journey. Their secret is 90, I would say, I'll say 90% of the time is that they've had help. They've had a guide. They've they asked coach. questions. A they coach, had a coach. A trainer. They had a coach, or yeah. some, some type of Some type of North Star, some type of compass. You understand right. what I'm saying? And right. um, once one realizes that is what it will take, then they can become more successful in their fitness journey. Absolutely. And coach, you, you just, you, you just on fire, man. You, you actually <laughs> answered one of the questions before I even had a, had a chance to ask it. But uh, one of the things that uh, I, I touched on at the beginning of the show was st- st- the statistics talking about why people, why we have so many people that start these resolutions and they fail right now. Today is the end of quarter one. Statistically speaking, 85% of people who started a New Year's resolution are already done. So 15% left, and another 6% of those are going to fall off at some point for the remainder of the year. So we're going to, statistically speaking, we're finished right, right. around 9%. Completion. Right, 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 right. So what are some of the most common reasons that people fail, and how do we avoid those things? Um, again, going back to help. You know, it's, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it on my own. And I'm saying all this because I've been guilty of it. I'm not going to talk about something that I have not either been through uh, directly, personally, or have experienced it myself. This is not so much an observation of the public, but more of an observation of myself within the the public sphere. You know what I mean? I have went through mm-hmm. my time of, hey, you know, new year, new me, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And mm-hmm. I'm not reaching out for help. You know, I'm not doing my research. I'm just doing what I feel. You know, we're in this day and age where everybody's in their feelings. This is how I feel. So this is what I'm going to do. This is how I feel. And this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to move because how I feel other than, you know what? It's cool. if That's how you feel, but try to hone it down, you know, hone it, hone it in a little bit more. Since you are feeling this way, who has, who can you join who's felt this way and had a similar goal that you have? and reach that pinnacle, reach that mountaintop that can possibly help you. And the refusal to do that can result in failure and has resulted in failure. You know, that's one, not reaching out for help. Um, And the other one is thinking that it's, I would say, now this is just off the top of the head, you know, thinking that all this stuff is, let's say, cute because you may see it done on social media, whatever platform you prefer, you know, Twitter, X, IG, Facebook, you know, or whatever, um, being somebody who creates content, um, watching others create content, being in the same room, in the same space, in the same gym as those who create content. Some people are only setting up for just that one shot. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? 
just that mm-hmm. one shot. It's not a it's not a totality of said workout. You know right. what I mean? It's not like, hey, you know what? I'm in the middle of my work. I'm gonna set my camera there, shoot it, and then I'm gonna continue continue on. And I saw that with my own eyes, and I was surprised when that happened. I was shooting content with somebody one time, and they just did that. And here I am. I'm thinking based off of what I saw on the internet of them. I'm like, oh, you're shooting content like me, kind of like right in the middle of your workout and doing that. And you realize that was just a lie. You know what I mean? And I said, oh, okay. So I always keep that in my Rolodex, my mental Rolodex when I'm watching social media. And I'm like, man, there's a possibility. The possibility that they're just doing this for the shot or whatever Mm -hmm. I see is that, you know what I'm saying? That's it. Which mm-hmm. is fine in its own self, too, because you have to realize, you have to be able to, once again, discern. Be able to discern what you see as, you know, what's real and, and what's not. And so when people are, you know, wanting to go on the, their fitness journey and they're looking at everybody else, and it can be inspirational. It can be motivational. I, I, I get that. But then when you realize you got to do it on your own, when you realize is that, <laughs> after a 45 minute workout session with me, you have to go home when you leave me and make those choices on your own of, are you going to stick to your nutritional plan or not? And if you don't, you know, it's not the end of the world, but how are you going to bounce back? Like you said earlier, it's like, man, you know, the, the ride was supposed to be there. If you didn't, you know, Mm -hmm. I was supposed to set up at this hotel and, you know, this happened, you have to constantly be able to adjust. And there will be times where it's like, I don't know how to adjust. And that's cool too. You know, we've all gotten to the point where it's like, man, I'm just stuck. I don't know where to go left, right, front or back. And you just stand there, but not making a choice equals stagnation, but you don't want to make the wrong choice, but you have to make one nonetheless. And that's tough too. And you got to live with it. And then that kind of goes back to what I said earlier is that people want to, they want to be more right than anything and mm-hmm. afraid to make a mistake. You know, mm-hmm. they're afraid to make a mistake and there will be times where you have to be okay with making that mistake. Say, Hey, you know what? I made a mistake. I was wrong. Now it's like, how am I going to fix it? Now am I going to seek out again, help from somebody who's been through this and can help me out? Or am I going to repeat the same thing I just did? And if I do, how am I adjusting? You know what I mean? So it's just, it, it does come down to personality. It comes down to your will. Like, what is it that you really want to do? And lastly, it's what's your overall goal? Some people just say, hey, you know, I want to, I just want to lose weight. And it's like, well, what's your why? You know, what's your why? You're trying to fit into some some pants, a smaller pants? Are you trying to fit into a wedding dress? Are you trying to fit into a tuxedo? You know, by what date? Because if you have a day and dates of when your weight loss, you know, journey, you know, may end or whatever your goal, you have a little bit more at stake. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. To complete that. They have a target. That. Yeah, yeah, a target, a target. And again, I've been through all of that where it's like, oh, I just want to lose weight, just lose weight. You know, it doesn't have to be a ginormous, you know, stake or whatever, wherever is that with that stake, but it has to be something. You know, there's been plenty of times where I'm responding to inboxes and people are asking me to, you know, help them. And I'm like, okay, so what's your goal? And okay, they say 20 pounds. I'm like, okay, by when? And they may not know. And then I help them try to, you know, entertain some thoughts of trying to connect that that number of weight they want to lose to an actual mm-hmm. date, you know what I mean? And what you do in between, you know, these hands and this hand is how you're going to get to that. You understand what I'm saying? So absolutely, that's how, that's just how things work. You know, you have a goal and what's at stake and who's going to help you get there. And that's just honestly how things work. But when somebody just is kind of being impulsive, and we've all been there, they just do it. And then when they fail at it or they come to a detour, they get so down, they get so down that they don't want to try again. Absolutely. Uh, Co- Coach Christian, you have a unique perspective because you're the first member of our team uh, besides myself that has a platform where you speak to others. Uh, you have an actual podcast and, you know, all of our other teammates, you know, they have their own unique things that you know, 
Some of them are 100% down in nutrition, 100% down in that. You're, you're sort of in the middle of all of that. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, you have a podcast, you have a platform where you're reaching out to these people. And one of the things I know, because I've, I've been here, especially when we first started this, is the silence. It's the, you, 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 you have this burning desire in you to, to share this message and to reach out to people and try to yeah. touch people, but you don't hear the reverb. You don't see yeah. the traction. You know, talk, t- take us through it. Cause I want everyone to hear this. Not just for me, take us through that mental journey of where you go from having a voice and you put content out there, you put information out there and you don't hear back for a while. You're like, Hey, is this worth doing it? Like, how do you, how do you as a host deal with that struggle of, putting information out there and not receiving feedback. You asked a very interesting question and I may be long winded on it, but uh, you know, I feel like Kevin Hart <laughs> on drink champs. He said, F and I'm going to say it. It's when you asked, how do, how did I deal with it? It sounds like in past tense and I will update it's How do I deal with it? Because I'm currently going through it and it's okay. like ongoing, right? It, mm-hmm. It's ongoing. And it reminds me of the Kanye West and Kobe Bryant commercial when, you know, Kanye is saying, you know, hey, I'm the best rapper out. And Kobe's like, more. You know, I've, I've sold this. And Kobe's saying, more. You know, I did this. And Kobe's saying, more. And it's that kind of thought process where Kanye's figuring out. It's like, well, I've done what I feel that I could do. And it's this realization that there's always more. There's always more. You know, that's one side to it. Then the other side to it can be is, you know, not good enough, right? Is this content good enough? Was it not good enough? Um, How do I judge that? What is my, what is my basis, you know, to do this? What is, what's my why? And these questions constantly go on, these questions constantly go on, on and on and on, you know, in your head. And you just, you just, you just keep going. You know, you just keep going. There are times to where when I am feeling like that and versus spreading, let's say, that vibe, that negative vibe, I just won't post or I just won't record. Uh, My last podcast full of transparency was maybe about three or four weeks ago um, Mm -hmm. because I kind of going through this phase to where I'm asking myself again, what's my why? You know, what am I doing this for? And your return on investment and if your return on investment, you know, is financial, because we all have to take care of ourselves. This illusion that content creators should not be compensated financially is mm-hmm. insane to me, you mm-hmm. know, because it's the amount of work that goes in this software that we're using. You, you have to able... answer the why question twice. Yes. You have to answer it for yourself mm-hmm. and for you. Yes. And... Correct. If you can connect your why to everybody else's why, I believe that's where the community can come in and your community can help you out too, because you're just right. human too. You know, right. just because we put a camera in our face doesn't mean we're perfect. You right. know what I mean? It's just that we have a voice that we're, you know, we're putting things out there. You know what I mean? I do better at, I do better at talking in action versus typing and texting to me, you know, right. um, and it's like, hey, why is this happening? Or why is this happening? Or, hey, this is how I feel. You know, what is this? And I've had uh, my community reach out to me, inbox me, say, hey, Christian, you know, look at it this way or look at it that way. And I have to be open, even though it's not my thought. It's somebody else's thought from the outside looking in. And there's a lot of times as content creators, we are on the inside looking out and we are so attached to it. Everything that we make, we're so attached to it. And there came a time to when I had to learn to do to detach myself so much from my content. And I began to have a lot more fun to it because there is a psychological game you do have to play. There are questions or posts that I put out and I'm not 100% committed to it. And it's the illusion that I could be, you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. that necessarily isn't it. It's just, hey, I may be looking for engagement. Some may call it trolling. I, you know, once again, that's Speaking the goal. Of 
Speaking of engagement, if you have a question, if you guys are watching live, I, I forgot to mention this. You got, if you have questions for Coach Christian, drop them in the chat. And we'll get them on. For those of you that are listening to the radio broadcast or on the podcast platform, go to the tackleobesity.com website, tackleobesity.com, and then you will see Coach Christian's page there. You can also drop us a question. We'll be happy to get it to him. You, again, this is a two-way dialogue, and this is what, what we're going with that question. It's not just us talking. It's the, it's the feedback that we get from you that drives this this machine that keeps this thing going. And I, I just want to say thank you to so much to all of you guys that have reached out to us, even if it's just a question or a thought, um, positive, negative, whatever. We just want to hear from you guys. So, again, tackleobesity.com. Uh, if, if you're on the, one of the podcast platforms or on one of our stations, KCAA 106.5, 102.5, D station at least, no listen behind. Uh, Case WCKG in Chicago, 1580 Fanatic in Phoenix. If you're on one of those, if you listen to us on one of those those platforms, go to the website because this is, it's, you, you're gonna you're gonna be a little bit behind. If we're not live there, but if you're listening to us on the live feed, drop a question in the chat. Anyhow, just get in touch with us. Get with us. Uh, we're gonna take a really quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna have more with Coach Christian here. You tune into the Tackle BC Show. Locker room. Like I said, people lose hope. So having these diseases doesn't mean it's the end of the world. And the body is a magical machine. If you train it and if you fuel it correctly and you treat it right, and this is not just physically, spiritually, mentally, the body can heal itself. Right. A lot of people don't understand that. And yeah, so the body is a magical thing. So I encourage people, it doesn't matter what pursuit you have to take to get to that next version of you. It doesn't matter if you have to incorporate weight loss surgery, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, whatever you got to do. Keto Queen, don't allow anyone to distract you or discourage you from making it to that next version of you. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. Two-Minute Drill. I took a, a 12-year-old and I was like, hey, you're getting ready for your first year as a freshman. You want to get ready for sports. What do you think your plate should look like? That 12-year-old could probably know I should avoid donuts. I should have some green on there. I should have some lean meat. It is a lack of education. Well, sometimes we get sold off in the intricacies because we want to maybe shortcut or have a fast track. But in general, we know we shouldn't be eating that donut. To touch on what Daniel was saying, we need to learn how to read labels a lot better. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't even look at the label, let alone the calories, let alone the protein, let alone the carbs, let alone the fats, especially the ingredients, right? So try to avoid these processed foods as much as possible at these grocery stores, at these gas stations. The statement of you are what you eat can't be more true. It, you really are what you eat and your body breaks it down and it goes into your cells. You know? Learning labels will be very important. The temptation is real. You know, the temptation, sometimes it wins, you know, and, and it's okay because we came to understanding that like, if if we eat an Oreo or we whatever food that we eat, that's not gonna that's not gonna really set you back anything, you know. It, it, that's not uh, uh, it's not gonna kill your diet. It's not gonna kill you know the progress that you made. So that's yeah, it's all in moderation. You know, you can incorporate all those foods uh, that you enjoy while you're still living that healthy lifestyle. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. Touchdown Dance. Now, it felt great to actually come up on board because, again, like I said, I, I didn't care about my weight, to be honest with you. I walked to the bathroom and I got completely went. Like, I mean, I was, I was like holding on to the railing in the bathroom, trying to catch my breath. And I'm like, this has never happened to me before. I was always the person to be a mobile big guy, but 
for me to get up and walk to the bathroom and be ended and tired, I was like, oh, no, nah. I had to change that. I had to change everything. It started to get to the point to where I didn't feel comfortable with the way that my life was going. So I just, you know, I had to make that change. Where you really lose is if you don't keep yourself accountable, at right. least every other day. Right. And you know, during my weight loss, I actually weighed myself every day. And, and not everybody says to do that. But for me, it was a way to hold myself accountable every day. And also with like, man, I'm holding on, I'm not eating and I'm, you know, I'm doing this thing. And, I, you know, whether you're doing intermittent fasting or you're doing this kind of meal replacement program, you will find that you're looking at that clock. When is my next opportunity to eat? Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. Cheerleader Performance. Extremely critical, I would say, to have that support. Um, like I said, you know, uh, outside of each other, I would say watching um, the YouTube videos, watching these uh, fitness programs, um, even though the person was behind a screen, but just having that person there to push you, to uh, give you guidance on a specific program, I think that's, you know, extremely critical and it's necessary. Um, also, you know, they motivate you. Even, like I said, even though they're behind a the screen, uh, come on, let's do it, let's get it done. You know, it's it's all motivation. So it's, to me, that's like, you know, it, you need that. You need to have that someone there, you know, pushing you, pushing you. So in between that birth, and your death, just like in sports and track and field, from your start to your finish, there's always going to be obstacles and situations that will try to tire you out. To try to make you say, why did I do this? Why am I doing this to make you quit? So ultimate success in the game of life has 12 dynamic principles that I've learned and that has helped me go from my start to a finish. In one phase of my life, I like to call that level one. Now I'm working on level two, level three, level four. So every morning we wake up, we're exposed to another level. And that's another opportunity to achieve ultimate success in life. Remember, oh, Coach's Corner. Having a coach is actually is, is a great thing, to be honest with you, in my mind, because a coach is going to always hold you accountable. A coach ain't going to be your friend. A coach is going to tell you the truth no matter what happens and he's going to base uh, he or she are going to motivate and you want to find you a coach that has already accomplished what you want to accomplish so they're able to see things that you're not able to see you get you a coach that have already walked the path so your path can be easy so get you someone that can speak life into you someone that can guide you someone that has a system that's going to work for you this program which is now called Tackle Obesity. So it went from let's talk about it, to let's get our guys well, to now let's inspire the world to tackle obesity themselves and empower people to do it. So we're partnering with a lot of different folks to do it, reach out and communicate and train and inspire people and then support them in their journey. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. And we are back on the Tackle Obesity Podcast. Again, thank you so much to all of our teammates uh, for just contributing so much to this movement. Uh, it is just truly, truly an honor to, to be here for you every week. Again, if you have questions, thoughts, comments, feel free to, to share them with you. This is this is a team goal here. Our ultimate goal is to fill an NFL stadium full of people that are battling this obesity journey. So we want you to be a part of the Tackle Obesity team, whether you're someone who's uh, coaching someone or, or supporting someone to get to across the finish line in their wellness their goals, or you need to struggle yourself, you need help, you have questions, whatever. We're all a team. We're all in this journey together and we are here with our newest teammate coach christian evans coach christian uh we're gonna get right back into this and um this is a a topic that i think is a little sensitive and specifically to you and i because one of the things that we share 
is that you and I are both African American males. And so I'm just I'm gonna shoot I'm gonna shoot very straight on this. There is a very strong stigma amongst the African American community, and even even further beyond that, um, with African American males about wellness, about fitness, specifically about obesity. Um, and, and here's where I'm going with this: as men, it's very difficult for us to identify when we have a problem until the check engine light comes on or worse. I myself am guilty of that. I never cared about my weight until I got to the point where I had to go to a doctor. Uh, I played for many years overweight. I, I would get back into shape in training camp. <laughs> I got dropped from being a starter to practice squad and had to work my way back because I showed up out of shape. And there's this stigma amongst men uh, specifically African American men, and also with the African American community, that you know it's okay to just kind of be big. Like I'm a big guy. That's just who you are. And the uh, the other thing is that that's a problem is that we actually attack people within our community that are trying to pursue wellness. And the the most recent example that I can think of is Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah's uh, come out and you know she stepped down from the board. Uh, and she's admitted that she's used, uh, you know, injectable um, medications. You know, I, I'm I'm of the mindset that you know there's no one way to fight obesity. We we need to understand what this obesity thing is. It is a very complex ecosystem of very bad things, and there's no one way to address it. Uh, some some of it some of us can work through just simple nutrition changes and exercise. Some of us need uh, additional support like a coach. Um, most of us do need additional support like a coach. But sometimes that just doesn't work. And sometimes, especially as you age, uh, you have so many different things that goes on in your life or it could be genetics. Uh, we have modern medical systems or, or technology or uh, in this case, in Oprah's case, you know, we have injectable medications. So what are your, what is your overall thoughts? It's sort of a two-headed question. What, you know, give us your overall perspective on, you know, how do we change the stigma of the obesity, um, addressing the obesity crisis in the African-American community? Because the, the, the statistics are, are disproportionate. It impacts us more than any other community. And then the second thing, the second part of that question is, you know, what are your thoughts on the, the use of injectable medications? I think it needs to start with communication first, because that's how one can establish their why. Again, you know, we've all been guilty. I've been guilty of not really thinking about how to better take care of yourself, right? And the reason why I want to emphasize better because you have to have some type of foundation of that to begin with, right? And there's taking care of yourself, then there's taking better care of yourself. And if there's no communication that you have to do either or, then you won't know you need to until it could possibly be too late. Um, back in, let's say, I think I was maybe like 23, 24, I was admitted into the hospital with high blood pressure and I didn't know that was, I guess, part of what was going on in my family or members of my family had it, particularly my mom. And I asked her when I was in the hospital bed, I'm like, so you got high blood pressure? So she was like, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, hindsight is 20, 20. I don't blame her for it. You know, don't you don't, but the communication of, Hey, maybe these are things that each individual household needs to talk to their household about first and foremost, you know, taking care of your house. It's, you know, what's going on with you as the head of household, um, the father, the mother, um, whoever it is and getting that knowledge passed down to your offspring and to your children and letting them know there's a possibility this could happen because it is genetic or it can be genetic, but we can fight this, you know, let's try to fight as much as possible through education, through communication. But that just doesn't seem like it takes priority until it's too late. And I can just really just speak for me in regards to what I personally went through 
And the reason why, um, let's just say that situation happened is because, you know, I didn't think about it. You know, you don't think mm-hmm. about it. We all go through this phase in life. And, you know, when we're in our, in our teens and our 20s where we feel like we're invincible, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That, like you said, that check engine light come on and it's like, oh, that's the kryptonite. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's like, oh, so I have kryptonite? Like kryptonite can be that close to me and it can affect me. But, you know, when you're younger, you may not even thought that. You know what I mean? And so right. that's where we get, to, oh, I can eat a pizza and drink a two liter and go to sleep and and wake up. You know, you try to do that now, you might not wake up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you're going to be waking up right. super, super stiff or super, super just slow and realizing that we are all mortal. We all have to just do better. And that looks different for each individual. But just with all that just being said, it's our body changes. You know, we evolve. You know, this is the first time in your life you've been your age. This is the first time in my life I've been my age. And it's totally different than when I was 15. But I can remember being 15 just as clear as I can see you on this uh, this live stream. You know what I mean? Um, so, mm-hmm. and you're like, you're trying to figure out how it all connects. You know, but it's like, you know, we, we age. And so therefore it's start doing a little bit more research of how does the body react when you get this age or, you know, what's the benefits of this when you age? My last couple podcasts has been more geared towards the benefits of strength training, strength, strength and training as we age and as we get older and what we need to sustain the inevitable 1% 1% muscle loss after age of 30 and how mm-hmm. to retain that. And I've been finding more and more interesting studies and put it like that. And it's not a one article fits all. And that's the cure for it. It, it more just opens up more and more um, curiosity for me. You have to be curious too. You know, you have to be a curious person to want to investigate that and learning how to discern and process all this information and who is it applying to, too, you know, it's like, okay, who are these studies um, applied to? Right. And it's not a one, one stop fits all, because if you're doing your research on a particular community, then that may not reflect our community as black Americans there are some things that we are more susceptible to. You know, you can chuck it up to environment. You can chuck it up to slavery. You can chuck it up to those things in our environment from slavery and passed on, so on and so on. These are all possibilities. Nobody's saying they're absolutes, but you have to entertain that possibility and you have to do your research and say, well, where was this research done on this particular Mm -hmm. article and how does it apply to me? And just take it into consideration. And I think the thing is, is that once again, we all want so many absolutes that you have to understand there's no absolute, but what information can you take from this? What information can you take from this? There are a lot of things out there that I may not agree with, but what information can I take from this? There was a point in time I didn't believe in weight loss surgery because I didn't have weight loss surgery. You understand? Mm-hmm. But as time mm-hmm. went on, I understand somebody else's position. There was right. a point in time to where going to the Ozempic thing to where I didn't understand it. Um, and I wasn't for it. I don't say I'm for it. And I don't say I'm against it at this point is that do what you can, as long as it's safe as far as for you and you've gotten your medical clearance. You understand Correct. what I'm saying? You've gotten your medical Get the professional clearance. help. Get the professional help, get the professional help, get the professional help. So with that being said, if that's what your doctor recommends to you and you trust them, then go for it. Then go for it. Yes, there are content creators and, um, you know, people making articles about their opinion on it, which is fine. People can have their opinion on it, but you can't take those as Bible. You have to seek your medical professional and, that can be sometimes a scary thing, even in our community, not wanting to go to the doctor. I was, mm-hmm. I was that way. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go because deep down you're afraid of what they're going to say. And that could be attributed to, you may not want to be corrected. Right. You have to be open to be corrected. 
You understand what right. I'm saying? You know, yeah, just absolutely. like you know, you you playing and saying, "Hey, you know, I'm a um, I'm gonna tackle this person this way," and it's like, well, this is how it's supposed to go. You have to be open to that correction to whatever that game is, that law is, and we have to start being more open to be corrected versus that we're thinking that we're right or thinking that, oh, grandma's remedy was, was right. Some of it probably is, but information can be updated. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've come to this type of neutral conclusion is because we really do not know what is in the food that we eat from this, from the, from yes. the actual soil that said grain is planted in to the said grain mm -hmm. that is being planted to mm -hmm. how that is cultivated, to how it's processed afterwards, it's like, you don't really have a hand in that. And if you don't, then you have to entertain the possibilities of, they're not playing fair either. So yeah. I guess I'll say, you know, I'm not playing fair either. And so I will take a shot. You know what I mean? Well, I personally ever take o Ozempic? No, because I understand from the little bit of research that I've have read is that it was intended for diabetic patients, just like the keto diet in mm -hmm. initially. But people saw others losing weight from it, and now it's a craze or the craze. Um, so that's kind of like my opinion on that. I think you touched on the key point is it needs to be under the supervision of a medical professional and a recommendation. Cause you right. do have some people who they just, they, and some of them honestly don't I, don't, I don't ever, I don't ever say someone doesn't need to lose weight. Cause you know what your goals are and what your right. needs are. Right. But there are some people who use it for vanity purposes. Like I'm just going to take Ozempic or whatever, Moderna or whatever. So I can lose this 20 pounds. So I can wear that, that suit for this wedding next month. And then, but that's not what it's designed for. It's designed right. to treat a condition. So right. to your point, it should be under the supervision of a medical professional. Right. Uh, as yeah. it pertains to the African American community, mm -hmm. I'll say this. We gotta stop beating each other up about right. weight. And for, uh, there's so there's the negative side and there's the unintentional um negativity as well. Right. Uh, here's here's what I mean by this. When I when I started going through my journey, when I when I lost, I'd say my first 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. I actually had people reach out to me when they started seeing my pictures. Hey, man, are you okay? Are you sick? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 That conversation should have happened when I was 420 pounds. That's when I was sick. Yeah, yeah, Not when I lose weight. So as especially in African-American community, and I know you mean well by it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're checking on me, but I'm I'm sick. I'm sick when I'm big. You know, yeah. we have to stop and we have to stop making fun of people trying to lose weight. I think of you know, celebrity examples like Luther Vandross. We gave that man a hard time about yeah. losing weight. Right. We used to always had to make the joke that skinny Luther can't sing. Right. He needs to get, get back right, fat right, again. Right, 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 right. We made fun of the comedian. Uh, is it Bruce Bruce, the one that had the, mm -hmm. uh, I forgot. Is it? Yeah, Bruce Bruce. No, uh, LaVille Crawford. People, yeah. people got on his page and made fun of this man. Yeah. Because he had, he had, the, he had the bypass surgery. Okay. But he is like a super morbidly obese guy. Right. And uh, I recall he did an interview when he spoke about how, you know, frustrating it was to even share the fact that he did the surgery. And he's like, I got a wife and kids. I'm trying to live longer for them. Right. So right. as a community, we have to do better in regard to that stuff. Number one, stop making fun of people, but also understand right. when someone's losing weight, it's not, a, they're, they're getting healthier. You need to reach out to that person that's 500 pounds and stop feeding them extra food. And give them, I used to get the big yeah. plate because that's a yeah. big man. Yeah. Stop doing that. Because just stop recently, the, don't be an I enabler. Saw, right. I just saw Lizzo said she's quitting the entertainment business or music right. or something like that. She's that gone through a ton of shame. Right. Yeah. Just, just, just with that. And, right. you know, a lot of it is it's like, you know, people only see you how they want to see you. And, you right. know, you only, you only, you can't, what they say, you can't get a, a second time making a first impression. So how Correct. people see you is how you people see you. If I've had an experience where, you know, somebody asked if I was sick when I, when mm -hmm. I lost weight, I didn't get it until maybe like 30 minutes after the conversation, they saw me in the store. This was like maybe like a month after I hit my goal weight of, you know, 215 at that time going from 405. And I've always been a big person, but when I did see that person, they had been like years. You understand what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. And they said, hey, you okay? 
And I'm like, yeah, you know, why? She was just like, oh, okay. And it wasn't, and I, I she didn't say anything after or afterwards, but I kept processing. I was walking through the store because I'm in the store, you know, buying my food. And I'm like, oh, she probably think I was sick. And I'm like, why yeah. do we always go there? Why do That's we the first always place we go. go to the negative instantaneously? Um, and there has been times where people have been sick, just like how they made fun of Chadwick Bozeman, and he was yeah. sick. You know, he was right. he was he was sick, and when people don't know, they will say anything, and right. that can be scary too. And so, right. as adults, I've, as I've gotten older, I've learned to not respond to everything. You Correct. know what I mean? Can have, you know? can have an unintended or an intentional mental effect on that person, and you could possibly steer someone in in the wrong direction just because of those. those yeah, type of yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not um, as encouraging as you think. You know, it mm -hmm. would be or should be. Right. Everybody is not happy and may not be happy. And here's the thing: I will say this from learning is that they just don't know. So, because you've lost your weight, I've lost my weight. And at the time when you're going through it, you're like, okay, everybody should be happy for me because I'm happy for myself mm -hmm. for for doing this. But mm -hmm. everybody doesn't sh share that same thing, and you have to be okay right. with that. You know, you Correct. you you just have to be okay with that. It's kind of challenging and it's tough. And how we respond can be like, oh, this is a diss or it's a shade. And it's more it's more laughable now that I've gotten older because when somebody is not in the know, they just don't know. So they will say anything and that anything right. is wrong and it can be wrong, you know. And, you know, people may feel a certain way, but facts will cancel all of those feelings instantaneously. Absolutely. Facts you know, over feelings. Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, just, mm -hmm. I was talking to my friend last night about that and it's like somebody can say one thing because that's how they feel but if I have a piece of paper that's legally documented you know, saying this is exactly what it is then do your feelings still stand or do they do they do you stand corrected? Are you willing to accept that correction? You know what I mean? Are Absolutely. you willing to accept, hey you know what? I was wrong about that. I see the point in that. You understand what I'm saying? So just with all that being said, nobody's going to be more happier for you than you at doing what's best for you. And you have to learn how to be cool with that and settle right. and, and settle with that. It's challenging. I'm not saying it is easy. It's challenging, you know, but you have to really just be happy with what you're doing. And we all want a community of people rooting us on. There's no problem with that. There's no problem right. with that. But it's, you know, this and isolation. speaking of rooting on, I mm -hmm. want to give a quick shout out to Soul Food Nutrition and Wellness. Thank you so much for the support to give us a little, little, little love right there. Yeah, that's Thank my homegirl, Michelle. That. That's my homegirl, yeah. Michelle. That's, yeah, Thank yeah, 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 yeah. Thank yeah. you, Michelle. Thank you for yeah. the support. We appreciate that. We had a question from Best Kept, and uh, we, we doubt, we're, we're not two minute drill here. Uh, so Best Kept uh, says, inevitable 1% muscle loss after 30 is a real thing. Uh, I can tell you without, without, Question, absolutely. As we get older, we lose muscle mass. That's right. why exercise is important. That's why right. proper nutrition becomes even right. more critical as we age. Our metabolism slows down. Right. There are charts and graphs and things uh, that we'll, we can put on the website. Uh, we've had this dialogue. I can't recall exactly who, which one of our, our coaches did that, but I'll be, I'll put that, uh, I'll, I'll ask the team to put that chart back up on the uh, Tackle of BC website. So uh, check it out. We'll, we'll try to get it up for you, like either Monday or Tuesday, but there's a graph that shows the inverse relationship between age and percent body fat and muscle mass. And it, yeah. it, it it's on a downward slope. As yeah. you age, you yeah. get more body fat, you get lower muscle naturally. And yeah. so that's and why that it's was, important for us not to contribute to that to that decline. And that was one of the articles and podcasts that I was reading off and looking over um, about, you know, aging. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, 40 and it's like, OK, why does my body feel like this? Why does my body feel like that? And so you come across right. these articles and it's like, OK, you know, that was really telling about, you know, um, the one percent, the inevitable one percent body loss or muscle mass, let me correct, muscle mass loss as we get older, right? And the things that yeah. you can do to slow that down, and those are two two things, strength training and how you recover and how you, let's say, how you, how you refuel those muscles that you've 
tore, mm-hmm. tore down and broke down is protein, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that's a touchy subject for a lot of people who don't want to read about protein and what is protein and the best sources of protein. And that gets really um, polarizing where it's plant-based or animal-based. And the evidence is right. That's an entire show, coach. That's That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. But right, but I'm just saying for for from from that, it's like that's where you have to constantly keep reading at. You know, have to constantly keep doing your research at. And the workouts that you do do from strength training, it's how do you recover from that? And you have to now. It's working out is no longer cute anymore. (sighs) After mm-hmm. 30, mm-hmm. it's like, no, you got to mm-hmm. do it <laughs> mm-hmm. or else your quality of life towards the end of life is going to really suffer. So it's all an right. investment at this point right now. So going back to what you were talking about, about the black community and working out and weight loss and things like that. And it's no longer cute for us no more to be the size or whatever. And it's like, you just have to move at this point. You have mm-hmm. to pick up a dumbbell and you have to move and you have to seek out help because if you never picked up a dumbbell and you're 35 37 years old nobody's going to you know criticize you for it you know the thing is is that go seek out help first because those things have to be structured because you could say hey you know what i'm 37 i'm 38 it's time for me to start working out and it may feel cute because you've seen somebody on ig or youtube do it and then after a week you're like i don't want to do it anymore why because you don't you haven't established your why and if you don't know what you're doing and you fail to admit that you don't know what you're doing you're not going to continue to do it so therefore seek you need out the help. information and yes. the accountability and invest that's in why yourself. having yes absolutely yes you think about and it's that's one of the things i'm glad you mentioned it i'm gonna go there real quick i know we're over time for our folks that are alive i'm glad y'all still on uh let's let hey, you know it is we, it. We, 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 this is great this is great dialogue but people always use the objective that it costs too much money. Well, yeah. so does medication later on yeah. in life. So does yeah. higher life insurance premiums. Yeah. Yeah. So, so does so does not getting a career choice because, to be honest, yes. there is a significant amount of discrimination against larger people. Yes. Uh, uh, so there there's a there are tons of studies that show that people that are obese earn less than their peers that are in there. Mm-hmm. Peak physical condition. Yeah. There's that. There's that stigma. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. the medical gun. And then, uh, you know, some companies discriminate because they think, well, you're obese, you're probably going to cost us more. Yeah. yeah. More days of work. You're going to be yeah. sick. Our yeah. insurance costs go up. And yeah. in some cases, if you're really large, you know, we have to make accommodations for you, et cetera. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I've literally even witnessed um, cases like this where, you know, people either weren't promoted or weren't given opportunities because of that, these type of things. So, when you're thinking about the cost, think about yeah. the long-term cost. Yeah. And most of this stuff, honestly, if you break it down to a daily basis, you're spending this anyway because yeah. a fast food combo now is twenty bucks. Yes. You yes. know, 20, 20 bucks a day yes. times yes. the number of times you go to McDonald's or yeah. whatever restaurant, that yeah. adds up very quickly. So, right, like you said, right. it's an it's an investment in yourself. But when you right. find out the reason why, it makes it easier for you to understand why you make that investment in yourself. Yeah, because so, initially people can look at it as as pricey. And let's just roll with it. Mm-hmm. Let's roll with it and say yes. So you also have to break it down to what is this costing per day, right? You just said, okay, average, let's say meal. And you know, let's just say we eat on the average maybe three to six times per day, right? But you're just talking about mm-hmm. one meal at, let's just say, $20. And so let's say you find a personal trainer like me and that personal trainer offers a, let's just come in for one day. Let's come in east one day. One per, let's say that session is one session. You understand what I'm saying? So what is that from that $20 mcdonald's meal that you've only eaten once who says you're not going to eat it twice who says you're not going Mm -hmm. to go back on the third time right so 20 times Mm -hmm. three is what that's 60 right so you take five days a week 60 times five you spent 300 dollars. now if i'm charging 40 dollars per one session out of that one meal (laughs) you understand what i'm saying that's only Mm -hmm. eight dollars 
that's eight dollars. So if you take eight times five, that's forty dollars. So going back to your point is that it's going to be more expensive to continue to keep eating that versus okay, investing in yourself and finding somebody that you can probably cut a deal with and say, if I can get at least one session per week and I can work out and I can learn um, a little bit more about how to better take care of myself and I can do that for an entire month for 40 times, what, say four, that's 160. Okay, <laughs> you, you, spent, you spent half of what you would have spent at McDonald's eating like that for an entire week. So what happens is I said I said all that to say is that people fail to break things down from a mathematical standpoint of what is this going to cost me per day? They can do it for any other thing, right? If you wanted to go to uh, beyond, oh, they'll do it for vacations. Or, they'll do yeah, it for they, you know, right? yeah. it's their yeah. why. They have a why. Right. Why do right. I? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to save up this money because you know what I'm saying I'm going to Turks and Caicos or I'm going to Los Angeles. I'm going wherever, and that's fine. You can do that. Right. You can also. Do that same mathematical computation and break down for an investment of yourself. Now, I'll add this also, uh, Coach Christian. Reward yourself with that same money because this yeah. is something that that, that I, I do. Uh, when I complete a week where I'm on track, mm -hmm. I take the money that I was normally BSing on garbage food yeah. and I put it. I, ha I have a I have a Christmas Club account. That's okay. an adjunct to my to my checking account. Right. And most of your financial institutions have something like that. I put that money in my account every week, every week, whether it's 30, 40 bucks, whatever. And my goal is to get a Harley. Yeah. So over the course of a year, I have enough money to put a down payment on my Harley. So I went right. and got my, my M endorsement. I learned how yeah. to ride. Yeah. And that's yeah. so I'm going to reward myself instead of eating the crap. I'm going to get a Harley. And my wife and I are going to get on, get on, and we're going to, you know, right. we're going to do some riding. Right. So right. Right. These, are, these are ways that you can, you can, you know, kind of keep yourself motivated and, and stay on the, stay on the on track. In addition to so, that, you know, by doing that, it's going to take time to reach your goal. And that's yeah. another thing about, I would just say any community or any individual person is that we want everything right now because we live in this instantaneous society to where at the flick of my thumb, I can mm -hmm. get this, I can order tickets, I can, you know, I can purchase my bike from Amazon or something. I can get it right, 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 right now. And they think that's how everything in life is going to be. It's like, no, it's going to take time. You know, when you are <laughs> working out or in your fitness journey to reach your goal, it's you have to give yourself time. Your timing is your timing. It's not the next person in front of you, behind you, on the side of you. You know, who knows what that other person is doing. I tell people that constantly when it's physique looking. You know, as far as from the standpoint of somebody's looking at somebody's physique, I'm like, you don't know what they're on. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, okay, it was empty. You don't know if somebody's taking those empty. Right. You don't know if somebody's snorting cocaine. You don't know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You really don't know. And so right. it's it's the fact that you have to just really concentrate on you and do the best job that you can. And it's give yourself time, give yourself grace. Once you allow yourself to do that, then everything will fall into place. Well, I mean, we could, we could go on and on and on. This, yeah, this yeah, has yeah, been an yeah, hour, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. Seemed like, it seemed like, it seemed like five minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. You provide so much value and information, uh, coach Christian. It, it, we, we, this is not the end. Like I said, you know, we, no, we're no, no. we don't this do the this right here. We do teammates. This we, yeah. we do teammates, yeah. right? We have That's another right. another coach on our staff. Uh, how do they reach you? How can they how can they find you on social media? How can they reach out to you? Um, you can just go. I'm gonna do this very simple. Just go to my blog site, ChristiansWeightSuccess.net, and all of my socials, how to connect with me on there, will be there from IG to Facebook to YouTube to the podcast. Everything is right there. I want to keep it simple. Keep it simple. ChristiansWeightSuccess.net. You go there and you can connect with me through all socials or right through there. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter and it'll, everything is right there. Plain and simple. Nice and clean. Outstanding, Coach. Christian, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you on this team. We are so excited. This is just the beginning, my brother. We got, a, we got a big battle, it. and we got yes, one head yes, coach on the score. Yes, with us. And I appreciate that. Um, this. Is, this is great. This is great. This is great. A, a, absolutely. And, and you guys continue to follow the website because you're going to see Coach Christian's page go up soon on the Tackle Obesity website. 
Uh, we'll have links in there. So if you can't remember anything else, go to tackleupc.com. You'll see the links on there for Coach Christian. Uh, if not him, anybody. Uh, all of our yeah. members on our team have yeah. some type yeah. of specialty. They have some role that they play in this battle against obesity. Yeah, and we want sure. you to play your role in this battle against obesity. For Join sure. the team. Go to us, tackleobesity.com, sign up, subscribe to our newsletter. If you are a, a coach or trainer, or whatever, you want to be a part of this, reach out to us. We would love to have you on here as well. Uh, but until then, have a happy and healthy week, and we will see you next time. Peace out.